This is a non-smoking theater, so please, no smoking. For the enjoyment of others, please refrain from conversation during the future presentation. At this time, please turn off all cell phones and pagers. And remember, no one has the right to touch you in your bathing suit area. The 9000 series has a perfect operational record. This sort of thing has cropped up before, and it has always been due to human error. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. It's the third time I've said that. I'll probably say it three more times, see? In my line of work, you've got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in to kind of catapult the propaganda. I mean, let's have some fun. Well, you know, after the tragic events of uh, January 3rd, come on. <laughs> on January 3rd, I left my visa at the Four Seasons on Doheny. It was like... I do like finding out where the line is drawn, deliberately crossing it, bringing some of them with me across the line, and having them be happy that I did. For some people, any official explanation of an event is always and only a synonym for cover-up. For such types, reality is a labyrinth of shadows and speculation. Nothing is ever as it seems. One plus one always equals something other than two, and there's no such thing as a straight line from A to B. They live in a world of spies and schemers, of aliens who are never seen, corporate forces who manipulate whole countries, governments who plot and kill their own citizens, and where Zionists or Freemasons, the Templar Knights or Opus Dei, have been running the planet for ages. This is the mentality that argues Roosevelt staged Pearl Harbor, that John F. Kennedy had more assassins than the entire cast and extras of Ben-Hur, it was really crowded on that grassy knoll, and that Princess Diana was most likely done in by members of the royal family, Elizabeth II, the Buckingham Palace. The aristocrats! I am proud to have Dick Cheney by my side. Besides from the humor of the joke, there's a sadness that these people had no self-realization that what their act was would get them absolutely no place yet they call themselves the aristocrats because they're clinging to the very last vestige of respectability September the 11th terror 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 weapons of mass destruction September the 11th September the 11th terrorists the evil terror terrorists terrorists armed with knives armed with chemical biological nuclear weapons fanatic terrorists September 11th September 11th killers September 11th terrorists terrorists of al-qaeda terrorists nuclear weapons terrorists 9-11 terror 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 I do, please, sir. Don't have any. Can you put your right index finger on here, please? I don't want to do that. Then we can iris scan you. I haven't broken any law. I know who I am, and I don't have to prove that to anyone. Mr. Stephen Ezard, UNAS. UNAS. What does UNAS mean? How did you know my name? September 11th was an inside job by the U.S. government. ...that goes with it. We are now in the presence of an effort by the United States government, by the Anglo-American finance elites, their allies, and uh, the mass media that are really the most important aspect of the entire regime to concoct something that can only be called the myth of the 21st century. It is the fantastic, absurd, contradictory, bankrupt, and discredited official account of 9-11. And this, I would submit, is the centerpiece of a new reign of terror. Question? Sweet. Do you know that 9-11 was an inside job? 9-11 was an inside job? Yeah, it was like a sort of like almost a controlled demolition. Those buildings were blown up from the inside out. Did you know? 
I was lying on the table at a natural practitioner's uh, office, and she was explaining to me how a tapeworm works in your body. What a tapeworm does, it injects into you a chemical that makes you crave what's good for the tapeworm. So, you know, you are the one who feeds yourself whatever it is the tapeworm wants. And so you go through this process where you feed the tapeworm and the tapeworm grows stronger and stronger and stronger and you grow weaker and weaker and weaker. And that's a very beautiful description of sort of our relationship with, um, you know, what Eisenhower called the military industrial complex and the financial sector, which has grown like a big fat tapeworm over the last, um, particularly the last 15 years. This was all perpetrated by the military industrial complex in the United States of America. Okay. This is all put together by the, the, the Inter International Monetary Fund run by the Israel lobby. You really think it's, you really think it's just Israel? I don't think it's just no, Israel, sir. It's I, not, think, I think no. no, it's not. It's not just run out Israel. through that though. It's, it's through the IMF, through, all, through the banks. And this all started back in the time of John F. Kennedy. That's right. Kennedy was not killed by Oswald. Oswald did not kill Kennedy. Anybody that thinks that is dreaming in Texas. Absolutely. It's funny. It couldn't come from that direction. It just makes no sense. The military-industrial complex has been involved, and this is their, uh, this is uh, what we call their ultimate war, terrorism. Terrorism has been around since Cain killed Abel. That's right. But now it's the ultimate war. It's never ending, right? That's right. We just so keep they, compounding. So, and so they just keep building arms and the taxpayer keeps paying for it. More than happy to. Uh, there's an old poster out west, as I recall, that said, Wanted, dead or alive. Our reliable belief in the goodness of America has been turned into a sadistic tool for corporate greed and government intimidation. Don't believe me? Your name is Tom. You live just off of Fifth Street. Nice car, Tom. Nice house. What's not so nice is you owe Pennsylvania $4,212 in back taxes. Listen, Tom, we can make this easy. Pay online by June 18th, and we'll skip your penalty and take half off your interest. Because, Tom, we do know who you are. That's where I said, you know, I need to I need to use that phrase. So I started to talk about the tapeworm economy, because if you look at the tapeworm economy, the media feeds us information about what's good for the tapeworm and bad for us. So you know we watch TV or we listen to the TV news, and we're encouraged to do things that make money for big corporations, but in ways that reduce our either our physical equity or our financial equity. So they get richer. <laughs> and we get poorer and and so we have this dynamic where, where we're the host and we're feeding the tapeworm and the more we feed the tapeworm the more powerful it gets and the more we lose Ta-da! and the talent agent he just sits there and finally he says Jesus that's a hell of an act what do you call it and the father says the aristocrats I don't get it. Our ability to survey and assess the landscape, much less that. the battlefield that this economy actually represents, has been sabotaged by the media. And as much as the C4 ISR multidimensional battlefield virtual environment is used to defeat military enemies, what happens when its GPS, longitude and latitude, satellite-driven systems are turned over to corporations, like it was on 9-11, when the C4 ISR code keys were handed over to the Global Guardians in the city of London? Which constituency is not reflected back to us in the mainstream media. And, and, and that is a, an important way that we get to believe something is true. So um, the, a tapeworm economy is an economy where a few insiders can constantly drain um, subsidy from the outsiders in a way that preserves their wealth, but it shrinks total wealth because the, the host is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Hey, there, buddy. Uh, how do you like it in my backyard? He wants to know how you like it in his backyard. This is his backyard. This is your backyard? Yeah, yes it is. This is your backyard. This is my backyard too, my friend. Uh, Canada. Canada? Yeah, yeah. It's your backyard? Yeah, yes it is. Good stuff. Um, do you guys know about the North American Union? You ever heard about the North American Union? I haven't. You ever heard of the SPP? What happened in Montebello two years ago? The provocateur police in Montebello? One of the things that caused this tremendous ballooning of the power and economic resources of the financial sector 
was in the early 90s we passed the the Uruguay round for GATT for the general agreement on on tariffs trade and tariffs as as a result we changed the rules of how capital can flow around the world and so suddenly you it's sort of Ross Perot's giant sucking sound you pull tremendous amounts of capital out of this country and you shift them abroad into uh, into other areas around the world um, and one of the things in fact that happened we do a lot to pull liquidity on those other areas so that you can buy in cheap so you pump up the United States economy at the same time you flatten the economy in Asia or in Latin America so you can buy it you know so you take this money at a high price and buy in cheap at a low price we're watching the end of sovereign governments and the rise of corporations a lot of some people do this for shock value well shock is just another uptown word for surprise Granted, it has a different quality to it, but a joke is about surprising someone. One of the cliches people often go to is, now a lot of, some people do this for shock value.